From this video, you will understand the microscopic model of electrical drift current, which you can understand as just counting electrons as they pass by. I will guide you through the concept that relates current, voltage, and carrier concentration. We will depict the semiconductor as this block that's carrying current. The current is shown going to the right in the picture, meaning that that's the direction that charge carriers either are going or the opposite direction they're going depending on whether they're electrons or holes. Remember if the charge carriers are electrons, the electrons are going in the opposite direction. So in this picture, they're going to the left. If the carriers are holes, they're going in the same direction as current. So they're going to the right. The description begins with just one charge carrier passing through the conductor and the cylinder that just appeared is the volume occupied by that carrier, what I like to call the personal volume of that charge carrier. No other charge carriers are in that volume. So if I took all of the charge carriers that are passing through the semiconductor, each one of them has that much space to itself. So it's certainly not to scale. Inside that personal volume is one charge carrier. I've depicted an electron with this velocity vector going to the left, V sub d n. d is for drift, n is for electron. There are no other carriers in this cylinder that's described as the personal volume of one conduction electron. The personal volume has a length L and a cross-sectional area A, so that the actual personal volume, base times height, is A times L. Let's look at exactly what the personal volume means as it concerns the carrier density. So the volume of one carrier, volume per carrier, is the same thing as the total volume of the semiconductor divided by the total number of carriers. Number of carriers per unit volume is n, so the total volume of the semiconductor per number of carriers is 1 divided by n, the carrier concentration of electrons. This is useful for writing an expression for drift current. Drift current is the current that results from the application of an electric field, or rather charges moving under the influence of an electric force. So the drift current is the charge per unit time. Charge passing by any given point per time. So if you stand in one place and just watch charge go by, it'd be the amount of charge per unit time. Why a minus sign? It's because we're talking about electrons if I put a subscript N on here. If I want to talk about holes, I'll use a subscript P and I would not have a minus sign. But the minus sign is to account for the fact that the velocity of charge carriers is in the opposite direction as current. And Q is the charge of an electron, so actually minus Q. Q is 1.6 times 10 minus 19 coulombs. And the time that an electron spends crossing his personal volume is distance over speed. And distance over speed is time. So we have an expression for the current. It's Q times the velocity divided by the distance. And again, the velocity has these decorations, big D for drift and N for electrons. The personal volume has a cross-sectional area, A, so let's divide that out so that you have I current divided by A. That's current density, J. So the electron current density is minus QV over L, that's the current, over area. I can't help but notice then that the denominator is A times L, base times height of this personal volume cylinder. So it's QV over personal volume, but personal volume is 1 divided by N. So I'm going to replace 1 over personal volume with N, and I have a working expression. The current density of electrons is minus the charge density of electrons times Q times the drift velocity of electrons. Remember, current density is current per unit area, not per unit volume, per unit area. That is for electrons. For holes, it's not much different. Replace the N with a P, and you don't need the minus sign now because the charge carriers are positively charged. Hole current and the hole velocity are in the same direction, so I've modified the depiction down here to show the hole going to the right along with the current. So that's the hole current density, the hole current per unit area. It's the hole concentration times 1.6 times 10 minus 19 coulombs, there is no minus sign inside of Q times the drift velocity. 
You should expect there to be both electrons and holes in your semiconductor, and so they're both conducting and in opposite directions. Their currents will add. Total current is the current of the holes plus the current of the electrons. And if you apply an electric field to make those currents happen, they're going to be opposite in sign. So the current of the holes is PQ times the drift velocity of holes, and the current of electrons is minus NQ times the drift velocity of electrons. With the net current density being composed of two oppositely signed quantities, they combine. If I have a thousand holes going to the right and a thousand electrons going to the left, then I have 2,000 units of charge going to the right. So they add together. They don't cancel each other out. So this is the current density in terms of drift velocity. Now drift velocity is not the most useful quantity. We need to find a way to figure out what it is. Other quantities here are useful. Q is perfectly useful because we know exactly what it is. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. N and P are useful because we've developed expressions for them. We refer back to lecture 13. The drift velocity needs to be inferred from another physical quantity called mobility. Drift velocity is related to electric field through this mobility. And it's direct linear proportionality. Drift velocity is mobility times electric field, plus for holes, minus for electrons. Mobility can be found in reference materials. It is dependent on the dopant concentration. And we have a graph in the textbook. You can find graphs in a lot of textbooks showing the mobility of electrons and holes in various semiconducting materials as a function of dopant concentration. Electric field is not too difficult to know because you can know voltage and you can know the distance over which that voltage is applied. Taking a careful look at this expression, Drift velocity is mobility, which is a constant of the material, times the electric field. It becomes clear that the drift velocity is the velocity that a charge carrier arrives at after being accelerated under an electric field. So drift velocity, in fact, is the terminal velocity of charge carriers. The plus or minus is really important, too, because the electrons accelerate in the opposite direction of the electric field. Holes accelerate in the direction of the electric field. And since mobility is always positive, you need the plus sign for holes and the minus sign for electrons. So inserting that into our expression for the net current density, we have the net current density in terms of the electric field. You notice the minus sign in front of NQV drift for electrons is gone now because the minus sign comes with the expression for the drift velocity and it cancels then. And so now we have the current density equals this thing in square brackets times the electric field. And this expression in square brackets has a pretty useful physical meaning. Let's take a look at our good old friend Ohm's law. I is V over R and it's actually only Ohm's law when R is independent of voltage. I always put that in there. Replacing R with rho L or A, resistance with resistivity times the length of a resistor over its area, and replacing resistivity with 1 over conductivity, and then the conductivity in the denominator of the denominator goes upstairs, and you have current is conductivity times area voltage over L. Voltage over the distance across which that voltage is applied is electric field. So current per unit area, bringing A over, is conductivity times voltage divided by the distance over which it's applied. J is sigma E, an alternative expression for Ohm's law. And in fact, in electromagnetism, that is the expression that we prefer to use. Again, only really Ohm's law if conductivity sigma is independent of the electric field. If the conductivity depends on the electric field, you would say that the material is non-ohmic. So comparing the expression we derived with Ohm's law, J equals sigma times electric field, it becomes clear what is inside these square parentheses. The expression inside is the expression for the conductivity. The conductivity of a semiconductor is electron carrier concentration times Q times the electron mobility plus the whole carrier concentration times charge times the whole mobility. Typically, a semiconductor will either be electron-doped or hole-doped, and then one of these is going to dominate 
the conductivity and the drift current then will be primarily one or the other. Drift current is only half the story. There is another way for charge carriers to move inside of a conductor, especially inside of a semiconductor, and that's by diffusion. If you have a region of the semiconductor which has an excess of electrons, wait a little while, you'll see that those electrons have smoothed out. They've moved, and while they're moving and smoothing out, there's charge motion. That charge motion is current, and that's called the diffusion current. And that's something we're going to have to talk about next.